The 6i Episode 7 CIA Project Hammer Citibank This episode is going to show why my world collides when I'm investigating the Promus software affair. I've been contacting and communicating with Bill Hamilton and I'm also communicating directly by mail and letters with Michael Riconosciuto, who has told me categorically that the Promus software, modified software that he used, was for Swift banking and it was installed at Citibank for Dr. Earl Bryan to move the covert CIA funds worldwide through the automatic clearing houses. And my investigations and prosecution for fraud against the directors of John Hopkins, particularly A.B. Krongard and the attorney of John Hopkins and the other directors directly involved from Amcare Labs is now going to be revealed. In 2000, General Earl Cockey who was the former representative of the Nugent Hand Bank, Washington branch. Also, senior executive and working directly with the World Bank, gave testimony in court about CIA Project Hammer that is installed at Citibank using the Promus software. This is coming from his court testimony. So now we've got a link here. I want you to see it. It's just an amazing link. Nothing happens by chance. I'm investigating the Promus software. I'm talking to the owner of the original Promus software, William Hamilton, and I'm communicating with Michael Riconosciuto by letter from prison. And so everyone knows while i've got a federal police for prosecution against the directors and identifying their links with cia and nsa and particularly ab krongard the promise software was installed at citibank and this is the testimony as i say of general earl cocky the washington representative of the nugent hand bank working with the World Bank, and this is his testimony about what's happening at Citibank. So as you can recall, a few months earlier before Robert Booth Nichols comes out and makes threats against me, Michael has told me categorically when I make contact for the first time that the second application was for Swift Banking and it was installed at Citibank with Transaction Technologies Inc. subsidiary. And it was used by Dr. Earl Bryan from Hadron and CIA to move their covert funds through the automatic clearing houses worldwide. And this is what General Earl Cockey testifies. He was the former Washington representative of Nugent Hand Bank, special consultant to Adnan Khashoggi gave a deposition running 67 pages concerning his knowledge and involvement of Project Hammer. He testified that Project Hammer was operated by the Federal Reserve, the US Treasury, CIA, FBI, Secret Service security agencies to seek recover to United States the proceeds of their arms, golds and drugs trading activities that were illegally diverted by major banks. And he says he confirmed that Project Hammer was to generate funds to pay off debts on bullion certificates issued by certain metal trusts. And that's Michael's testimony. Michael Reconosciuto has told me repeatedly that's what he was doing with Nugent Hand Bank with the gold bullion from their minerals companies with the companies in Australia that were owned by Michael Hand and the Nugent Hand Bank. And then he says he confirms that Project Hammer was the continuation of the operations of the Nugent Hand Bank. Ten days later, after giving his testimony, he dies of pancreatic cancer. Now that's an amazing 
confirmation of the importance of Project Hammer Citibank linked back to Mugen Hand Bank, which is consistent with Michael's testimony to me. And he gave that testimony in 2000, and that's nine years after Michael Reconosciuto is imprisoned. And then he says the most explosive part. A.B. Krongard and CIA's Project Hammer and Banco Ambrosiana overseas. He says, Bankers Trust, Bankers Trust International, the subsidiary of Bankers Trust, was the other Miami bank named in the book St. Peter's Bankers, had funds stolen from Banker Ambrosiano. According to the book's author, the funds were deposited into account numbers and controlled by Lucia Jalley and Mikhail Sindona. And that's where Alexander Haig fits in. I'll do a podcast on that, have definitive evidence of the links with Banker Ambrosiana with Alexander Haig. And I believe that's why Robert Booth Nichols, when coming to Australia to threaten me, said that all my problems lead to Alexander Haig. And this, this is what uh, General Cocky says. In 1982, Ferdinand Marcos arranged for General Fabian Ver to transfer 50 tonnes of gold bullion to Switzerland, shipped 747-87, uh, 747 aircraft, chartered individual using, and he names to deliver the gold bullion to Bankers Trust. And then he says this, A.B. Krongard was the vice chairman of Bankers Trust, and that's correct. Alex Brown then becomes Alex Brown Bankers Trust, and then Bankers Trust Deutsche Bank. Director, he was a director of John Hopkins Medicine prior to becoming the executive director of CIA. General Cocky was director of Nugan Hand Bank, Washington Branch. Robert Booth Nichols represented over 1 billion gold bullion certificates in Switzerland owned by Ferdinand Marcos. And this is the most explosive part of General Cocky's testimony. A.B. Gronkard. He says, Dan Hughes caused two site drafts to be issued in favour of Bankers Trust for the collateral commitment to Chase and Citibank. Dementia Instruments and Activity caused General Earl Cocky to believe kicked off Project Hammer program in a big way. The lawyers and investigators who were building a lawsuit for Dan Hughes, so there's another legal case here, other clients cheated out of their money, were quietly negotiating with Central Intelligence Agency in an attempt to pr settle privately and out of court. And apparently, from the testimony, according to Dan Hughes, these negotiations were taking place with the office of Buzzy Krongard, the then number three man in CIA. I can now understand why Robert Booth Nichols is sent out by A.B. Krongard to take care of matters of my investigations, plus a federal police investigation and two TV programs. So the 7.30 report and the dateline specifically raise the concerns that A.B. Krongard executive director of CIA and director of John Hopkins is aware of what Amcare Labs had done to us with the $20 million investment fraud with David Wong, who was a known bankrupt. He was bankrupt in the papers on the weeks that he's representing John Hopkins with their investments with us. We cover the fact that it talks about the fact that William Brody, who knew about everything that Kerry Chris was doing in Australia with our minister's government, plus he knows my credibility, and my own prime minister is trying to raise these matters directly with George Bush Jr. during his visit to Australia, they knew he was appointed to the Foreign Intelligence Board. So this has got intelligence all over it, linked back to my investigations and communications with Bill Hamilton and 
Michael Reconosciuto. So they were monitoring the letters Michael's writing to me. They're monitoring the telephone calls that I'm receiving and uh, with uh, William Hamilton. They knew that I was on the path of successfully exposing what had happened in Australia with the Bogus Prince, CIA Operation Steel Point, Project Hammer, the Prima software installed at Austrac with sold by and the Federal Attorney General and uh, intelligence agencies sold by Rupert Murdoch's company. And so we now have confirmation that Robert Booth Nichols was sent by A.B. Krongard. All my investigations into Promus, and that's why Robert Booth Nichols was sent from Kuwait to shut down Danny Casalaro, because he had the BCCI checks financed by the Royal Kuwait Royal Family for William Casey, Robert Gray, for the Iran-Contra deals for Ted Shackley, Khashoggi, Gorbun Afar for the tow missile exchange as part of the release of the hostage deal. And that was all set up by Michael Ledeen, one of the neocons. So this you cannot make up. It basically shows that I was on a path and a collision. There's nothing I could do about it. And that's why Robert Booth Nichols contacted the SBS Dateline TV program to pass his number on to meet with me and then made the threats against my life.